Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to the Asia CEO community for this online session today on a Friday, March the 12th, 2021. My name is Jamilet Kano, and I will be your moderator today. I'm very, very glad to have you all here and participating in our first session with Malaysian Golden State Selangor. And we're gonna be learning and knowing more about how this Golden State is thriving, the ASEAN Business Hub. We're gonna learn also the latest developments in tech and manufacturing sectors. And we also want to understand more and strengthen this connection between Malaysia and Hong Kong, and obviously between the Selangor community and business community especially with our Asia CEO community. Thank you again, once again, again and again, to be here with us. We're gonna be starting very soon in just a couple of minutes, but before that, I would like to give you some housekeeping rules. It is very simple. Obviously, we want you to participate with us and have an interactive session. So for you to ask questions, you can see at the bottom of your screen, the chat box the Q&A chat box where you can type your questions and we will help you later on to ask the speakers. If you wanna raise your hands, have a reaction, remember that also via this digital platform, we can do so at the toolbar. So please interact with us and be present. I'm sure you are, that's why you have connected. We are also gonna be sending later on all the information that's being presented here. The PowerPoint and the materials would be available for you. This session is live on Facebook, but it's also gonna be recorded. So if you are the ones that unfortunately couldn't connect with us and are missing the session, you will have the recording later on on the Asia CEO website for you to watch. You want to connect with the speakers and other members on the platform, please do so offline. Connect through the Asia CEO WhatsApp if you're already part of it, or if not, please email us or through the website. And we're also going to do, as I said, the Q&A at the end of the presentations. And finally, but not least, we would like to have a special moment happening now. If I may ask all of the speakers and organizers to turn on your cameras, because we want to have a photo for the souvenir and to remember this great event. Again, first time, our collaboration with Selangor and Asia CEO community. So please, we have Mr. Dato turning on his camera, Raymond, Najib, I see Gary Lam, thank you very much for being here. And who else are we missing for the photo? We are missing Ray, Raymond, Raymond Siva is here. Uh, if I may, you give us your biggest smile and best angle so we can start taking some of screenshots to remember this great moment. Thank you very much. And anybody else in the audience, if you want to also be part of this, turn on your cameras. Thank you. Thank you once again for connecting. And, oh, I see the timing is 3.06 here in Hong Kong, Malaysia, whatever you are connecting with us and everywhere in the world. Without further ado, and I know you don't want to keep on listening to me, I would like to introduce our CEO from Asia CEO community, Mr. Gary Lam. He's going to give us his opening and welcoming remarks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yamane. Um, my name is Gary. I'm from uh, Asia CEO community. Uh, so firstly, I would like to thank you each, of, each and every one of you being here with us today. Uh, we are very pleased to be able to welcome those of you that have been with us for a long time, and as well as um, those who are new to the Asia CEO community. Before we start it, um, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to our event moderator for today, uh, Yamalik. She is the founder at Louder Global. Um, she 
be very supportive to this event. So thank you very much. And also I would like to thank you um Calvin from um Invest the Lego. Um he has been working with us for the past uh, two months for this event. And also I would like to thank you our uh, panel speakers for today. Um Daito Han Jung Kim, uh he's the executive controller at Alaiko State and also Daito Hassan Asari, um he's the chief and Victor Raymond, Victor Raymond Smith, the Chief Marketing Officer at Malaysia Digital Corporation. And lastly, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Naji uh, Abraham, he's the Chief Executive Officer at Cyberville. Um, yeah, so we, HSC committee, we have been working closely with our, our, our committee at Malaysia and our partners in, at Malaysia for the past four years. And we right now we have about uh, close to one thousand members in Malaysia, and we are interested in doing more things um, in Malaysia. Um, I understand uh, that number of our members are interested in investing um, their company or starting their new company in Malaysia. So um, I hope this event can uh, help our members to understand more about Malaysia. Um, so once again, thank you all for uh, attending this event today. And without further ado, uh, I will pass the mic back to uh, Yamani for the start of the event. Thank you very much, Gary. I'm sure this is going to be a very interesting and insightful session. And we would like to welcome here on the online stage with his opening remarks, the honorary Dato Tang Chan Kim. He is the Selangor State Executive Counselor. Please welcome him. Mr. Gary Lam, Chief Executive Officer, Asia CEO Community. Dato Hassan Azari Hajidris, Chief Executive Officer, Invest Selangor Berhad. Mr. Raymond Siva, Chief Marketing Officer and Senior Vice President, Investment and Brand, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporations. Mr. Mohamed Najib Ibrahim, Managing Director of Cyberview Sundar Berhad. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon everyone and welcome to our webinar series co-organised by the Selangor State Government and Asia CEO Community, Hong Kong. I do hope everyone in Hong Kong is in good health and taking all the necessary precautions to say so. We are very happy to undertake this project with Asia CEO Community, a prestigious club that is catered specifically to entrepreneurs and CEO in the region. Asia CEO community has positioned itself as a unique facilitator of knowledge and experience sharing between industries and between countries. Thus, this session is a great opportunity for members of the CEO Asia community to obtain the latest updates in Selangor and to consider having our state as your gateway to Malaysia and other ASEAN markets. Our three distinguished speakers will share with you what Selangor has to offer as an attractive investment destination and the gateway to ASEAN. I do hope that with this information, members of Asia CEO community will be able to consider visiting our state once our borders are open in the near future and potentially to set up their region base here in Selangor as part of your post-COVID-19 revitalization business plan. As you are aware, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in global negative growth in 2020. However, with the current rollout of the vaccination program in many of the countries, including Malaysia, we hope that most of the economic activities will resume in the second half of the year and will result in overall positive economic growth in 2021. According to International Monetary Fund, IMF, Five ASEAN members, namely Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines and Singapore will, part, will anticipate positive economic growth in 2021 due to their strong domestic demands, higher investment commitments and favourable trade fundamentals. IMF also forecasts that Malaysia's GDP will grow highest among the five ASEAN nations at a pace of 7% this year 
despite a contraction of 5.6% in 2020. At the same time, the World Bank has also projected Malaysia's economy to grow at 6.7% in 2021, Selangor being Malaysia's key economic powerhouse, contributing over 20% to Malaysia's GDP, will stand to benefit. Selangor offers strategic locations for business operations, complemented with a comprehensive infrastructure equipped with excellent ICT facilities and business-friendly environment. In addition, we also have the largest skilled talent pool of about 3.6 million. Furthermore, our 160 higher learning institutions produce over 60,000 fresh graduates annually ready for work. Despite the predicament resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, Malaysia's investment performance in 2020, especially in the manufacturing sector, showcased our strength and dedication in absorbing the impact of the pandemic and in initiating immediate strategies realignment. Malaysia secured a total of 1,049 approved investment projects valued at 91.3 billion ringgit or USD 22.8 billion in 2020. Specifically, Selangor remained as the best destinations for inward investment in the country, as we secured a total of 38.7 billion ringgit or USD 9.6 billion in approved investment projects for the year 2020. In the manufacturing sector, Selangor recorded the highest approved investment amounting to 18.4 billion ringgit or USD 4.6 billion with three main industries being paper printing, ENE products and food manufacturing. Ladies and gentlemen, taking Hong Kong and Selangor bilateral relations into perspective, it has developed into a much needed and mutually beneficial relations over the past few years. This is shown as Selangor has become a manufacturing base to several Hong Kong stock exchange listed companies such as Lee and Man Paper Manufacturing Limited and Night Dragon Paper Holdings Limited. In addition, the continuous engagement and discussion with our counterparts such as the ASEAN CEO Community, Hong Kong Productivity Council, Hong Kong General Chambers of Commerce, Hong Kong Trade Development Council and Invest Hong Kong will enable both parties in expanding the reach regionally and globally. I sincerely believe that webinars such as this program today will offer a greater understanding of Selangor and will open up more opportunities on how we can work together in the future. Thank you once again to Asia CEO community for co-hosting this webinar with us and to all the participants, have a pleasant day ahead. Thank you very much once again to Selangor State Executive Councillor for his kind and insightful words. And now to start the conversation, the learning and the connection, we are going to have the topic of Selangor, the gateway to ASEAN. And for this, I want to invite here on the, our online stage, Dato Hazan Hazari. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Invest Selangor Verhat. He has experience in investment promotion, industrial development, project coordination, monitoring, business development, and quantitative analysis. Please welcome Hassan here on our stage. Thank you, uh, Jamine, uh, or, or maybe our moderators uh, today and uh, our fellow distinguished speakers, Mr. Raman Siva, as well as Mr. Najib. Uh, thank you to uh, Asia CEO community for jointly organize uh, this event and uh, for giving us the opportunity uh, to share with you and the participants uh, and also uh, produce uh, Slango State and the strength of, uh, of, of the Slango State that, that, that we have. We hope uh, like at the end of the session, uh, we will let you, uh, you will be able to, to underst understand further on Slango economic development as well as the competitive advantage uh, that we have. To start with, uh, uh, please allow me to share with you the Slango economic strength. Okay, uh, 
you can see there is the, the contributions of Selangor State to the national GDP is at 24.2%. This is the figure uh, for the year of 2019. And uh, previous years in 2018, we contributed, contributed about 23.7% and uh, in 2017, about 23.3%. So meaning that, that we are always at the highest uh, positions as the major contributor to the national GDP. And uh, Selangor State is the most populated state with uh, 6.51 million populations. And also we are contributing at uh, the highest manufacturing growth in Malaysia uh, with 7.8%. Three eh? percent, and uh, over the last ten years, Selangor has consistently grown at a higher pace than the national GDP, as you can see at the uh, slide there. And for 2020, Selangor is expected to grow by 2.1 percent, while the national GDP has uh, contracted by 5.6 percent. And uh, in terms of labor participation rate, we have the highest uh, labor participation rate with 76% and three out of five are employed in uh, management, uh, professional or skilled jobs. Next. Uh, to you to familiarize where is Selangor, if you can see the red color on the map there uh, is the Malaysian map. Selangor is centrally located at the peninsula of Malaysia, which is near to Kuala Lumpur. Actually, in fact, uh, Kuala Lumpur is surrounded by Islam State. Eh? In terms of the uh, connectivity, uh, the 12 busiest container port in the world is located in Islam State, which is a uh, port plan, the biggest port in the country. And the main uh, uh, gateway, the uh, the airport is uh, also located in Selangor, even though the name is Kuala Lumpur International Airport, actually it's located in the Selangor state. And uh, the state uh, also well connected by the major rail network, uh, connecting major cities, as well as uh, connecting to Kuala Lumpur, and major highways also connecting uh, to every corner of the state. So those connectivity, uh, shows the, the strength of the Selangor state being the most developed state in Malaysia. As mentioned by uh, Honorable Datuk Teng just now, uh, Selangor state produced more than 66,000 graduates annually, which uh, provide ample uh, uh, labor pool to the investors that would like to set up their business in Selangor State with the, of course, the ability of uh, uh, multilingual uh, with high English proficiency. And uh, this 66,000 graduates annually produce from more than 150 higher learning institutions that are located in Selangor State, inclusive of the public universities, private universities, private colleges, uh, training centers, and so on. Yeah. And uh, in Selangor also, we have uh, the highest number of employed person in, in, in Malaysia with uh, 3.45 million. To share with you the existing and new incentives, uh, currently, of course, the uh, Malaysian government offering uh, various incentives, including pioneer status, investment tax allowance, reinvestment allowance, import duty exemptions, Repatriations of income and employment of expatriates. There are few uh, uh, incentives that uh, this is some of the key incentives given. Of course, there are a few more incentives. And in addition to that, uh, under the uh, government of Malaysia's economic uh, recovery plan for year 2020, uh, a few more incentives has been added to the current incentive, such as a 0% tax rate for 10 years for new investment in the manufacturing sector with capital investment between uh, 300 to 500 million ringgit or equivalent to 70 to 116 million US dollar. And uh, 
Another incentive, attractive uh, incentive that has been offered by Malaysian government last year uh, is zero percent tax tax rate for 15 years for new investment in manufacturing sector with capital investment above 500 million ringgit or above 160 million US dollar and 100% uh, investment tax allowance for three years for existing companies in Malaysia relocating overseas facilities into Malaysia with capital investment above 100 million ringgit or 70 million US dollar. Latest uh, initiative or incentives given by Malaysian Investment Development Authority is the One Stop Centers for Business Travelers. It just launched last week. Uh, this uh, short term business travelers uh, will, will allow uh, short and long term business travelers, meaning they can apply uh, to enter Malaysia and exempted from being quarantined. Of course, there are two categories uh, under this program, which is short-term business travelers and also long-term business travelers. Uh, for short-term, it's not more than 14 days. And for long-term business travelers, uh, it's up to 90 days uh, under social visit pass. Yeah? And uh, of course, there are, there are terms and conditions uh, to be uh, uh, complied by the tra business travelers, such as you are restricted to the uh, itineraries given or itineraries that have been approved by the Malaysian Authority. You cannot uh, go beyond the itinerary stated that, or that has been approved by the authority. For further information or for the applications for this uh, one-stop centre, you may uh, visit uh, the, the uh, website uh, or the link that we shared in the slide, which is uh, safe travel.maida.gov.my now please uh, allow me to share about invest Lango. invest Lango is the investment promotion agency for the Lango state government which offers the following uh, services to investors who we view as partners in developing a conducive investment friendly environment the keywords that uh, the three keywords that reflects our to, to to better explain our roles and function is to promote, facilitate, and coordinate. Mainly uh, to promote investment opportunities into Slango State, to facilitate investors who like to invest in uh, Slango as well as the existing investors, and to coordinate their project implementations. Uh, in the state uh, of Slango, of course, uh, we are also. Uh, to complete the ecosystem of how we're facilitating the investors we are also working uh, closely with federal and uh, state government as well as uh, state government uh, agencies uh, business chambers and institutions the higher learning institutions the financial institutions as well the industry players uh, itself And in order to, to coordinate and uh, facilitate uh, the project implementations uh, by the investors in the state, we are also working with this uh, specific or uh, various uh, agencies that I, I mentioned just now, based on uh, cases such as the uh, SSM or Companies Commission of Malaysia for you to incorporate uh, company uh, promotions of evaluations, approval and facilitations uh, with MIDA or Malaysian Investment Development Authority and uh, another one is the development of environment which is uh, very important to the manufacturers or for those who decided to set up their manufacturing plant in, uh, in Slango State and of course the local authorities is the one who will be given you the business license, the planning approval, the building plan approval as well as the CCC or Certificate of Completion, Completions and Compliance uh, for you to start your, your business. And the rest is as mentioned in this in the slide, like the Department of the Labor, uh, the Telecom uh, Malaysia or in short TM, the utility, utility providers such as the electricity providers, uh, the gas uh, supply providers, 
uh, fire rescue department, and, and so on. This is uh, to show you our previous uh, performance or in, in attracting investment into the state of Salamo. Uh, for your information, uh, last year, for the year 2020, uh, Selangor recorded the highest uh, in terms of attracting investment in the manufacturing sector with 18.4 billion ringgit or equivalent to almost 4.5 billion US dollar. So for the past three years, uh, we have been enjoying a very good uh, growth in the investment uh, in the manufacturing sector. Uh, in the 2019, uh, we have recorded uh, 17 billion ringgit, and in 2018, uh, 18.9 billion ringgit. So for 2020 and 2019, we are at the top positions as compared to other states in attracting investment into the manufacturing sector in the country. Uh, in terms of focus of industries, uh, uh, that we are promoting, we are focusing on five core clusters of industries, namely FMB manufacturing, uh, transport equipment, which is inclusive of aerospace and also automotive. Uh, third one will be the life sciences, which is inclusive of pharmaceutical, medical devices, healthcare services, and so on. Uh, fourth, machinery equipment, and last but not least is the electrical electronics. Other than this, uh, for uh, five core clusters, we are also giving emphasis on the, another key areas such as uh, uh, the aerospace industries, the biotechnology, and also the e-commerce uh, sectors. This is uh, some of the uh, global brand that uh, decided or located in uh, in Slango. You can see Airbus, Toyota, Volvo is in the uh, transport equipment industry uh, or clusters, uh, machinist equipment such as uh, the local brand SAMW, the international brand uh, ABB, Fanuc Robotics, and so on. Under electrical electronics, we have Toshiba, Panasonic, Samsung, Western Digital, Anwa QCell, Toshiba, FNB. We have Nestle here, the, the, uh, the, the Nestle even have their uh, HALA Research Center or excellent center located in the Selangor state. FNN is the previously Singaporean company now the, uh, owned by Thai group and also Dutch lady and a few more such as Hakko, uh, Monin and, and so on. In, in the life science, we have uh, Top Glove, Famaniaga, Hatalega, BASF and, and many more. Uh, and as maybe uh, some of you is not realizing that uh, actually Selangor is the uh, the biggest producer of the rubber glove in the world. Eh? So the 60% of the rubber glove in the world produced in Malaysia and the top four is located in the Islamic State. Next. So this is uh, some of the uh, companies uh, from Hong Kong that uh, decided to, to invest in Islamo. The most recent one is Nine Dragons, Paper Holdings Limited, previously Lee and Man Paper Manufacturing Limited, and of course, uh, Lee Kam Ki and Da Chong Hong Holdings. So we hope that we can uh, have more investors or more companies from Hong Kong to, to, to decide to, to, to locate or expand their business in Slango State. I think uh, with that, I conclude my presentations. You can have uh, uh, our Q&A sessions uh, after, after this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again to Dato Hassan for all the information and obviously the great insights. We're going to talk about how global tech companies are using Cyber Jaya as technology test beds. Mm. And for this, we have our speaker, Mr. Najib Ibrahim. He's the Chief Executive Officer of our CyberView, Sindirayan Berhad. And he has more than 28 years of experience in manufacturing, engineering, 
project and property development, operations and transport hubs. So please welcome Najib. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much. So, so basically I have, uh, I guess that uh, Datu has mentioned about location of, of uh, Salalango is smack in the middle of the, the, the Southeast Asia, uh, highly connected. Likewise, uh, Cyber, Cyber Jaya actually, as a matter of fact, that located in the heartland of, of Salalango. Okay, if I move on, and let me introduce the company. Uh, basically, the company I'm working for is Cyber Abuse Jaya Rahat. We are the uh, master developer of Cyber Jaya. And as the master developer of Cyber Jaya, so pretty much our roles, uh, our core roles, uh, are, we are, uh, what do you call it, uh, involved in investor relations uh, with regards to potential investors coming in, invest in Cyber Jaya. And we are also uh, assisting the industry for industry development initiative. We are the tech hub developer and also manager of the city of Cyber Jaya. And last but not least, we are the cyber city manager. Okay, as I mentioned early on, the location of Cyber Jaya itself is in the heartland of Selangor. Uh, early on, uh, Dato uh, mentioned or presented that location of Selangor uh, to the rest of the world. So Cyber Jaya is actually located uh, right smack in the middle of Selangor, the golden city state, the golden state. Um, so we are highly connected via uh, the air, uh, airport nearby, uh, quite close to, to Kela Isapang, uh, connected via highways. To, to, to the city of Kuala Lumpur and also to the seaport yeah, via another highway. So in terms of connectivity, Saibuja is well connected to the rest of the state uh, as well to the rest of the country. Uh, on top of that, uh, in, in next year alone, we're going to have this, what we call this uh, mass rapid transit system coming into Saibuja, whereby we'll be having uh, two uh, stations uh, serving uh, the city of, of Saibuja. Okay, when we talk about Cyberjaya itself, uh, perhaps that uh, we have heard about, about, about Cyberjaya in so many uh, articles and things like that. Uh, but what we are selling is basically, it's not just about land, you know, about facility. Uh, it's all about the whole ecosystem altogether. So the ecosystem that we have in Cyberjaya is in the process of the hard infrastructure, the soft infrastructure, the uh, community, the talent, and also incentive encompasses everything. So that's why Cyberjaya is currently a thriving a living lab for innovators. Uh, it's a smart city for sustainability and livability. We have attractive uh, incentive, high concentrated of tech companies in, in Malaysia. Uh, over 240 enterprises have grown a uh, success story in, in Cyberjaya. Um, we have uh, you know diverse talent pool because we have uh, within, within uh, Stone throw away distance within Cyberjaya. We have seven uh, higher uh, learning institutions uh, to support the talent uh, need requirement for Cyberjaya. Uh, we have affordable, affordable world class infrastructure. We have highly connected uh, via dark fiber. Um, we have a, fire, a future 5G enabled city. As a matter of fact, currently we have this what we call this 5G open lab Cyberjaya, where we use all the uh, use cases. For say about uh, at the moment we have probably about twenty five use cases currently tested uh, in our five uh, G open lab, and last but not least, uh, last year uh, we came out with this what we call a one stop center uh, for Cyberjaya for investment and also a promotion. Okay, now we talk about the Cyberjaya itself, the the area, uh, the whole Cyberjaya flagship zone. Uh, uh, the area is about six thousand nine hundred sixty. Uh, we have a cyber city uh, status, MC status, whereby that the investors, the te technology companies, uh, be able to procure or acquire this MC status, uh, MC status uh, company, and be able to enjoy incentive and whatnot. Our population now stands more than 140,000 with 40,000 uh, knowledge workers. Uh, and with that, we have around 26,000 students uh, to be able to supply to the uh, what do you call it, manpower and resources needs in, in Cyberjaya. Over 40 uh, government and GLC, government-linked companies currently operating in Cyberjaya, more than 400 companies uh, with MSC status, uh, 900 uh, business entities. Uh, we have a very healthy startup community in Cyberjaya, uh, not just uh, from, from Cyberview, but working closely with the like of Magix and a few other government agencies uh, to nurture startups uh, in, in Cyberjaya. 
So in term of investment in 2019, about uh, ringgit Malaysia 14.3 billion generated from this from this MSC status company, and uh, uh, investment generated by this uh, uh, MSC status companies in 2019 about 9.12 billion. So these are some of the players currently operating in, in Cyberjaya. Some notable names that are currently still operating in Cyberjaya, like so AT&T, Dell, uh, AMD, and DXC, and whatnot. And some of these people are still operating in Cyberjaya. Most of these people are still operating in Cyberjaya. And uh, for instance, like the latest one, this one company from France by the name of Derrick coming in uh, to also start to open their business in Cyberjaya. Uh, we have also combined together with the multinational corporations, we have local companies that will be able to supply, to become vendor to all these multinational uh, corporations. Uh, we also have government agencies like of MDAC, also they have their headquarters in, in Stabajaya. Uh, we have uh, Mari, Mike, Futurize, and, and there's so many government agencies also currently operating from, from Cyberjaya. And as I mentioned earlier, also we have high Institute of Higher Learning, uh, the likes of uh, Multimedia University, located in Cyberjaya, University of Cyberjaya, also located in Cyberjaya, uh, Link Pong Wing, University of uh, for Creativity, also located in Cyberjaya. <coughs> now, <clears throat> so the objective of, of what will be our focus area, we talk about Savajaya as a smart city because it's actually involved uh, the development and testing of intelligent technology uh, to provide value solution and services and aiming at, of course, there's three main items here, agenda, to increase efficiency of public services and also city living, improve the quality of life in creating a safe city, and last but not least, improve the standards of environment uh, sustainability. So these are among the things uh, when we talk about objective or at the focus uh, focus area uh, in infrastructure, environment, economy, and also society. Uh, with that, uh, Cyberview, we have what we call this uh, uh, collaborative innovation for city space, uh, co innovate currently located at our office. To, to again, we talk about this uh, smart city and we look at Cyberjaya as a thriving living lab, meaning that we use the whole uh, Cyberjaya city as a test bed. So it's no longer uh, uh, what you call technology be tested in labs, you know, uh, but it actually can be tested throughout uh, the city itself. Yeah. So what we have thus far, the likes of uh, like Murata, they have came in earlier to test this vehicle counting, uh, uh, vehicle counting uh, apps, uh, NTT, uh, Intelligent Traffic Management System. A uh, few years back, we started off with this uh, few of these uh, cashless uh, pilot uh, projects eh? with Touch and Go, a local uh, cashless uh, player, Boost and also Tape were there to participate in this uh, cashless society for, for Cyberjaya. And uh, recently, with micro micro mobility, we bring in this company called Tri Triki. So they will come in and basically to have this uh, bike sharing, but it's actually electrical uh, uh, electrical bicycle. But how to support this? So that's why in in, in Cyberview we have uh, uh, this program called Cyberview uh, Living Lab programs. So this program is divided into four sections. Uh, notably, one is that on the talent program where by that we, we work with all these uh, universities and higher learning institutions to bring in the, the talent to Cyberjaya. But first, we go and talk to uh, the industry, uh, investors that would like to come in, wish to come into Cyberjaya, what are their needs, requirements, and we try to match make between the requirement of these investors that come in and invest in Cyberjaya, plus with the talents that we have. So this is a matchmaking program. And recently, we have signed this MOU with the Talent Corp. With Talent Corp, we'll be able also to bring an expert you know, outside Sabayaya, within the country, to bring in and to be able to support the needs, the requirements from the, the industry players. That'd be one. And then secondly, what we have in Sabayaya is that our Living Lab Accelerator Program. So under this Living Lab Accelerator Program, uh, we bring in uh, startups, you know, uh, cohorts, um, you know, five, six of them uh, per period of time, they came in and then they would basically pitch their, uh, their products. And this product later on, they will be tested in, in Cyberjaya. So that's when moving on from the accelerator program, then we have the pilot program. 
So from the trial program, as they go even further, they park them under the uh, our living life enterprise program. So we have we are currently Sabubi is providing this uh, you know cradle to grave kind of whole holistic uh, services to all our potential investors that come to to Cyberjaya. Okay. So some of the, the the companies that you know they have, they are here they have been operating in Cyberjaya. Uh, Soka, I think that Soka is well known for providing these uh, car sharing services. They came in when they came into the country. They started off in Cyberjaya as uh, they are uh, pioneering these uh, car, uh, car sharing services. And uh, we have also our local talent. Uh, Aerodyne, uh, they are big in 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 uh, drone based solution, uh, drone based solution uh, pro service provider. Uh, currently, they are in 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 Cyberjaya. They have grown uh, so much. Well, I guess that at the moment now they are ranked second in the world with regards to uh, drone based uh, service uh, solutions uh, to 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 companies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we had this, uh, what you call this China Mobile International Launch, their first uh, global shared service center in Cyberjaya back in 2019. So they are also currently exploring and also uh, implementing 5G for smart city solution in Cyberjaya. So coupled with whatever the initiative that we have, we work hand in hand with, 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 with all parties to be able to bring in uh, you know, uh, technology companies, uh, ICT companies, are uh, research, development, and, and commercialization companies to, to Cyberjaya. Now, uh, last year, we, we rolled out our new Cyberjaya master plan. Yeah? So in this Cyberjaya master plan, we have identified uh, four zones with regards to Cyberjaya, the north, the downtown, the south, and also the west. Um, so the north zones is where we have our uh, uh, transit-oriented development because we'll be having uh, by in 2022 uh, two of these uh, MRT station will be operating uh, in Cyberjaya North and also Cyberjaya City Center stations. There will be two stations in Cyberjaya, and downtown is where we have all this uh, currently. Most of these company will be currently operating. We have a lot of facility for small and medium sized industry, affordable uh, lease, office lease, and, and whatnot. So, South is where we, we are currently promoting the three new clusters. Uh, these three new clusters, including smart mobility, smart healthcare, and also uh, digital creative. So, we have plenty of, of land here. We have a uh, matured uh, ecosystem uh, down South. And we uh, lately we received quite a lot of uh, companies uh, interested to come into Cyberjaya uh, because they want to build co-location data center. They want to build a R and D center in Cyberjaya. Uh, so among the things that we asked them, why Cyberjaya? So basically, when they said that they did some study that Cyberjaya infrastructure is already matured as compared to uh, other region. Yeah, so that's why they, they actually potentially choose Cyberjaya where they want to come in and invest. Uh, it's a very interesting fact because we in Cyberjaya, as I mentioned early on, we are looking into five aspects of the ecosystem. The hard infrastructure, the soft infrastructure, the community, the talent, and also the incentive. So all these five encompasses our, uh, our, our effort to bring in or rather to assist uh, businesses from far and wide to come in and open their businesses in Cyberjaya, Selangor, Malaysia. Now, uh, having said that, um, we are also working closely with uh, other government agencies uh, for the like of uh, MIDA, MITI, MATRIT. Of course, we definitely work very close with uh, Invest Selangor, you know, to, to be able to bring uh, companies uh, to consider Cyberjaya as their um, location to invest in technology, in ICT, in, in research development and so commercialization. So understanding all this, uh, this requirement, yeah, I mentioned about smart mobility, smart healthcare and digital creative, that's where we have uh, launched what we call this Cyberjaya Investment and Service Center. So it is a one-stop center. Of course, that took mentioned early on is the one-stop center working with, with MIDA and the state of Slango. But in Cyberjaya as well, we have our Cyberjaya Investment Service Center as a one-stop center, provide facilitation services on investment, business start, uh, setups, all under one roof. So 
this uh, service center actually we uh, we collaborate with uh, other uh, service uh, center one stop center like with invest lango and also with uh, with uh, maida miti and, and madrid so any investor will come in and you need further more information with regards to uh, business facilitation, you know, how you want to set up your companies, you know, how you want to, you know, all these talent services, uh, business location and facilitation of QD's uh, township and community. Please come and visit here at our Cyberjaya Investment Service Center. Then we can have a session where we can brief you what are the opportunity and potential that you have to come in and invest in, in, in Cyberjaya. So I guess my time is up. I have used so much, I think we give like 10 minutes. So with that, um, I thank you for your attention. Okay, back to you, Yenet. Thank you very much, Mr. Najib. And I actually would want to ask you a question if that's possible sure, before sure. we go back to Raymond Siva. You are mentioning that obviously your platform is a matchmaking platform and you get all these new pitches and people wanting yeah. to, to grow their business mm -hmm. in, with CyberView and CyberJaya. Right. And I also know that a couple of bigger tech events are coming to Malaysia hopefully next year. Uh, yeah, tech world yeah. events like Web Summit and Rise that was actually based here in Hong Kong and it's moving to Malaysia. Do you see an increase of startups working in different and uh, new in innovation and investing in, in this innovation? With uh, yes, definitely, oh. definitely. Uh, the, the, it's, it's inevitable that the, the, the startup community now is growing so very rapidly uh, because there's a lot of needs and want uh, with regards to how can we make things more better and efficient. So startup is, is, is the way forward because if you look at it, even our national G GDP uh, startup, they will grow up into SMEs. Right, so maybe in the next ten years' time, our national GDP forty percent will be coming in from SMEs and also startup. So it's very important that we need to nurture this startup so they can grow and become the unicorn, uh, you know, of the world. So we are very open here in Sabujaya. Please do come and visit us. Uh, you know, we'll walk you through our startup program and things like that, and how we'll be able to assist. Uh, you know, wherever you are. You know, even just to share with you, if I have one more minute. Uh, our our lab that we have in here in in, in cyber, cyber view our co co innovate uh, it, we do it's not a standalone thing you know we actually work with other uh, startup community for instance like last year we went with invest lango invest lango bring us to brought us to to uh, melbourne so we signed an agreement with the other startup called uh, in, in in melbourne so so actually we have a, a cross pollination kind of uh, community uh, we're also talking to the Osaka Innovation Lab. We're talking to the people from Korea and Tokyo as well. So it's not about here we are alone, but it's actually it's a cross-pollination kind of activity whereby they will be able, if you say there's something in Hong Kong, uh, you know, we will be able to bring the people here and they can pitch their, their uh, products and offering. Likewise, we also can bring the Malaysian startups to, uh, to Hong Kong as well. So it can, you know, by collaboration. So we are looking forward to that. Super. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. Najib. All about strengthening the relationships for sure. Looking forward to that. Right. And moving on next, we are going to be talking about how the digital economy is thriving in Malaysia post pandemic. And for this topic, we are very grateful to have Mr. Raymond Siva. He's the Chief Marketing Officer and Senior Vice President of Invest and brand Malaysia Digital Economy Corporations. Ray has over 23 years of experience in journalism, strategic marketing, and crisis and issue response. He's also very high regarded for all his work that he has done in community, brand, and financial communication. Please welcome Raymond Siva. Great. So it's been a very interesting year last year. Um, we're coming to almost uh, 12 months since the MCO, the Movement Control Order, was introduced in Malaysia in uh, March 18th of last year. And over the span of that 12 months, you know, we have seen many disruption of plans. Uh, like Yemi said earlier on, we have to be agile and pivot uh, to take into account this new norm. Um, and as my chairman likes to say, in unprecedented times, we cannot be doing precedented things. 
Uh, so if you look at it, the big events that happened last year, the WCIT that was supposed to go on in Penang, uh, we pivoted uh, into a virtual setting. Uh, the global pandemic also looked at how we lead our life uh, adopting digital as the new normal. Uh, you see the increase in digital solutions, digital apps that took into account a variety of aspects to our life, whether it's ordering food or shopping, uh, going online and even entertainment. And that even cut across to the top of the house with our government, uh, where they also went virtual, where cabinet meetings uh, were done online and, and other uh, government meetings with stakeholders uh, were done online. Next slide. So if you look at that, we always say there is a, there's always opportunities in crisis, right? So never waste a crisis. And it wasn't, it wasn't a crisis of the usual proportions. So this, this situation went on for a good 10, 12 months, but it also showcased the innovation-led economy, right? Uh, the digital space was buzzing. We had a lot of people looking into what they could do or offer to Malaysia uh, across the manufacturing sector, services sector, uh, a lot of innovation came up. And the same happened with MDEC, right? Um, as of June of last year, we decided quite quickly that this wasn't going to end anytime soon. Uh, and we pivoted to digital, right? So some of the successful things that we did uh, was the SME Digital Summit, where we had over a million views uh, last year. Uh, and we just saw the hunger for people to, or the entrepreneurs and SMEs to get onto the digital bandwagon. Um, there was uh, obviously programs run in by the government, the Panjana program, the Prihatin program. Uh, and recently, uh, the prime minister just launched My Digital, uh, which was launched in February. And that was a culmination uh, of one year uh, worth of work that was accelerated. And I think the time has never been better uh, for Malaysia to really truly embrace, embrace digital transformation right from the top of the house. Yeah? Next slide. Just want to run through some of the things that MDEC uh, has done. So just for background, uh, the MSC Malaysia, the Multimedia Super Corridor was launched uh, in Cyberjaya in the state of Selangor in 1996. Yeah? MDEC or the Multimedia Development Corporation was the agency tasked to implement and to drive the MSC Malaysia agenda. And this year, August 1st, we will celebrate 25 years of not just the MSC, but also MDEC, right? So if you, I just want to share some numbers here. If you look at the left on the top, if you look at the digital eco economic contribution to the GDP, uh, it has been on the rise over the last three years. Um, and uh, as we see, the Prime Minister has announced it as well in My Digital. over the next three years, you'll probably see a 3% increase uh, from the digital economy to the GDP, right? That will take us up to about 22.6 to 23% contribution from the digital economy to the nation's GDP. On the MSC side, the middle box, if you look at the revenue, and I think uh, Najib shared that earlier on as well, we've seen an uptick both in terms of revenue as well as investments uh, into the multimedia super corridor, which is a corridor running from Cyberjaya to the KL Twin Towers. Yeah, it's about a 60 uh, kilometer corridor. And that's how we started the multimedia super corridor. But you see the investments in this space uh, not decreasing despite the global pandemic, right? And we are very optimistic that uh, as a country, Malaysia will see continued uptick uh, in investments into the digital side. Uh, in terms of talent as well, uh, you see an uptick in talent, foreign knowledge workers, which is the foreign talent, you can see a, a downturn. But if you look at the bar charts on the local talents, you see that we have a strong pipeline of uh, ready future talents, yeah? future ready talents, digital talents to support the growing investments and, and the growing revenues, uh, which leads then to expansion of these companies in the MSC. So the achievements to date, cumulative as of the end of 2019, as uh, 2020 figures are being finalized and audited right now, we have 2,900 active companies in the MSC, only in the MSC, um, investments of about 86 billion, revenues of about 100 billion, and, and exports of 37 billion. Um, and what I would really want to stress here is that at a time when we talk about startups, and Yemi, you brought up the word startups, uh, Malaysia, the MSC itself was a startup. MDEC was a startup 25 years ago. 
and we've managed to nurture quite a number of other companies uh, who have now gone on to be SMEs or even you know unicorns or almost on the cusp of being unicorns, uh, including the likes of Grab, which was you know a Malaysian startup uh, before they moved over to Singapore uh, for funding reasons, right? Uh, and so we remain committed towards growing the startups. We have the DNA of uh, growing startups from 25 years. And right now we just have to up our game and ensure that we have a farm of unicorns coming up over the next uh, 25 years. Uh, very good FDI track record. We are playing host to about 40 of the 100 companies on the Forbes 100, uh, including the biggest uh, Microsoft, uh, JP Morgan, Shell, Alibaba, Samsung, NTT, Google, IBM. They all have a presence and, and we have a growing presence here uh, in Malaysia. Next slide. Uh, just a validation of some of the things that I've talked about. Uh, the Mercer Cost of Living Survey is an important survey. Um, as you know, uh, the, the cost of living really looks at the quality of life uh, that you can have for that same $1 that you carry into Singapore or you carry into other countries. And so we've been uh, consistently ranked number one uh, in the Mercer, or at least in the top three, the Mercer Cost of Living Survey. Um, if you look at the World Economic Forum, uh, we are very competitive. Uh, overall rank 27 in ASEAN, we are second. The ease of doing business, uh, we are ranked 12th. Uh, and if you look at all the other rankings, uh, you know, even on the AT Kearney, uh, we remain a preferred choice for investors to come in in ASEAN. Uh, the last box on the, on the bottom right is also really interesting. We did a research with Startup Genome. And uh, the numbers there are, are really quite surprising. We are not top 10 in the emerging ecosystem for startups and top 20 uh, emerging ecosystem in talent for startups, right? So it bodes well for where Malaysia uh, is moving to this year and, and the following uh, 25 years. Next slide, please. So just a bit of a history, uh, birth of the Multimedia Super Corridor, as I said earlier on, 1996, 25 years ago. 1997, we started attracting the global companies already. Uh, the likes of NTT, Ericsson and Intel, Oracle are still here. Uh, 2004, we were ranked third in the AT Kearney's Global Services location. And we're still there now, you know, a good 15 years later. Uh, 2015 was at the nadir of our MSC status companies, 4,000 plus, including all the big names. Uh, 2017, we launched a digital free trade zone, which was the first e world trade platform, EWTP, outside of China that is run by Alibaba, right? And that allows uh, uh, Malaysia to assume the position as a regional transshipment hub, right, for e commerce. Uh, if you look at 2020, we expanded the Malaysia Digital Hub and the MSC Cyber Centers. We democratized uh, the reach of digital uh, throughout Malaysia. Uh, the MDH really caters for startups, so it's co-working spaces. Uh, we really want to then bring the benefits of digital or the interest in digital uh, investments uh, to all uh, states uh, according, uh, across Malaysia. Uh, we conducted the Digital Investment Summit, which was part of the Malaysia Tech Month and really had a lot of traction around it. And as Yemi, you mentioned earlier on, uh, we'd be looking to land rise in Malaysia uh, next year for the next three years. We also have the WCIT, the physical event being planned for next year uh, as well, somewhere in Q4 of next year, right? Uh, we also rolled out the SME digitalization grant to really look at how we want to digitalize our 1 million SMEs. And the majority of those are in the state of Slango uh, and KL, right? Uh, and we want to ensure that not only they benefit, but all the SMEs throughout Malaysia, including Borneo, Sabah and Sarawak, uh, also get a chance to benefit from the digital technologies, right? So what's happening for 2021 and beyond? We're really looking to develop, like I said, democratize uh, digital, ensure that all the companies throughout Malaysia get access to the digital technologies and also enable our people, uh, the Malaysians here, to up their game under a program that we have called Saya Digital. That means I am digital or I digital, right? Uh, so that will be a focus for us uh, for this year and moving forward three years. Yeah. Next slide, please. These are just some of the leading companies that we have right now under our global acceleration and innovation program. Uh, the MSC guys are right on top and you see guys like Vitrox, Penta Master, Securemetric, 123RF. Uh, these have all gone through the mill 
and have really uh, benefited from the digital space in Malaysia. The fast growing startups, uh, for all of you guys out there, people like Cat Bay, uh, they've raised 20 million and you know, facilitated over 198 million USD, by the way, uh, investments for over 10,000 SMEs. You look at food tech, we've got Da Makan, which is the first local startup to join Y Combinator Accelerator. We just had a second, uh, third one as well. Uh, we had Droppy is number two, and we have uh, Brio HR, which has been confirmed uh, to be a Y Combinator uh, alumni. Uh, they're currently going through the program right now. Uh, Najib mentioned Aerodyne. We're very proud of this company. Uh, they're number two in the world, yeah? number two in the world right now. Uh, and they're looking, they're gunning for number one, which I've, you know, no doubt that Kamarol and his team at Aerodyne are going to get there very, very soon. Uh, Kasim, 108 million USD with over 300 million uh, in GMV. So if you look at the, the companies, we've got the, the ICT uh, sort of companies, the, the traditional sort of companies which are doing very well in the digital space. And if you look at the startups as well, we've got startups who are really growing very fast, able to attract uh, an, at least Series B or Series B, B plus kind of investments, you know. So 30 million USD and above now seems to be something that we are able to attract uh, over the last two or three years. But it's been 25 years, yeah, worth of work leading to this. Next slide. So this is how we want to move forward. And uh, it may look complicated, but I, I draw your eye to the pyramid and right at the bottom of the pyramid uh, is where we want to focus on the digital business services. This was previously known as shared uh, business services or, or uh, GBS. Uh, and we're moving away from the transactional activities towards high value add activities. And Malaysia becomes really a, a source of reference because of how quickly we've managed to pivot uh, in the work from home or working remotely, right? A lot of these businesses are based off in Philippines right now in ASEAN, or they look towards uh, India, for example, uh, and a little bit in, in uh, you know, other parts of ASEAN, but no one, uh, no other country has the kind of value that we provide, right? We've got Bahasa Malaysia, which is, you know, we can translate into Bahasa Indonesia. We've got Cantonese, we've got Mandarin, we've got English, uh, and we've got Hindi, uh, Tamil, so we're able to then service uh, a whole range of different clients and a whole range of different geographies, right? Uh, so we're looking to attract more people uh, into Malaysia with the digital business services and also provide more jobs for our people, right? Uh, we've got really good talents coming out of our universities and MDEC supports the premier digital tech universities. There's 16 uh, institutes of higher learning uh, and uh, the MMU University, which is in Cyberjaya, uh, in the state of Slango, of course, uh, has got one of the best graduates uh, in this space, right, of digital creative content and also digital technologies. Uh, so we build upon that. And as we move up the second layer of the pyramid, we want to focus on this core text, which we call uh, the building blocks of the nation, right? So artificial intelligence, digital content tools, uh, cloud computing data, as well as cybersecurity. Um, all of this uh, have a genesis in Cyber Jaya. And uh, we really want to work very, very closely with all our investors together with our partners in Slango, uh, Invest Slango, as well as in uh, Cyberview to ensure that we land those investments here, but not only just here, yeah, and, and see how we can then democratize and, and grow uh, these investments in other parts of the country as well. If you look at the focus industries, I think we're aligned somewhat also to what Cyberview shared earlier on. Uh, we've got also smart manufacturing, health tech, fintech, uh, agri tech, as well as clean tech as key areas. Uh, that is ripe for digital intervention. Uh, and finally, we call it the big bets of the future, the potential areas that we can grow in very quickly, uh, partnering with academia. Yeah? So blockchain, advanced robotics, extended reality, deep learning, uh, digital currency is something that, that we are looking to bring in investments uh, and then look at the partnership that we can grow within industry and academia. Now, all of these plans is also aligned to the national investment aspirations that is uh, propagated by MITI, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, as well as the Malaysian uh, Investment Development uh, Agency, MIDA. Yeah? We've also aligned this with MOSTI, the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation, uh, according to their 10 by 10 framework, MISTI framework. So I think we are now uh, more aligned across all federal agencies to be able to provide that support to investors. Uh, we're also very uh, close towards setting up a OSC, a one-stop center for digital investments between MDAC and MIDA that I think will assist a lot of these investments. Yeah. Next slide, please. 
So we have the complete investment life cycle here. We call it the land and expand in ASEAN. Yeah. So if you want to start up, if you look at the black box there, we've got the digital nomad pass. It's a short term pass to enable remote uh, tech professionals to live and work in Malaysia. You can come in for six months, very quick. You can test out your, your uh, ideas. You can work out from the Malaysia Digital Hub, uh, you know, and then see whether this is the right place for you to land. And we're sure it, it will be. The Malaysian Tech Entrepreneur Pass is for global entrepreneurs to set up base and quickly kickstart their tech venture, right? So you don't have to go through the usual uh, uh, process, uh, but we assist you to come in here to make sure that you are uh, welcome and you are uh, really facilitated into starting a business very quickly. The MDH really is the is the workspace that we offer. Uh, very quickly connects you to the ecosystem of digital talents, uh, you know, uh, HR, digital marketeers, so that you can scale up very very quickly. Yeah. Now, if you're looking at expanding, of course, we have the MSC with the 10 bill of guarantees. And we, really, I think when we started off 25 years ago, the 10 bill of guarantees was a novel uh, proposition. And we still, I think, are the only ones in the world who still have this 10 bill of guarantees. Uh, but it's due to go uh, through a revamp. It's been 25 years to see whether we can enhance or, or better some of the that, that guarantees that are provided under this 10 bill of guarantees. Uh, we are the one-stop uh, agency, MDEC is, uh, one-stop agency for the digital tech ecosystem. And uh, we're looking to also help you guys, uh, any investors out there to land in ASEAN using Malaysia as the base and our fantastic connectivity across uh, all the other uh, countries in ASEAN provides you the best place to land and to expand, not within Malaysia only, but also within the region. Yeah, next slide. So uh, these are just some of the key regional technology focus areas. Uh, Dato' Hassan, Najib, don't mind me sharing some of the other sweet spots in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, the Northern Corridor, the NCIA up there. We've got MSC, which is really the purview of uh, Cyberview, Cyberjaya. We've got Irda and Johor uh, down south. We've got the ECER, and then you've got Recorda as well as our other uh, partners in Sadia up in uh, Borneo. Yeah. So these are some of the areas uh, that we're looking to harmonize as well to spread the digital love across Malaysia. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, just very quickly, uh, my second last slide here, what do we uh, stand for? MDEC, if you look, start from the 12 o'clock point of view, we have the incentives and the support, the 10 bill of guarantees, tax exemption, non-tax exemption, uh, no internet uh, censorship and all this. All of this is available on our website, mdec.my. Uh, policy and regulatory advocacy. We're helping out with the cloud first policy. We've contributed to the AI and data framework. We are also co-leads on the national, uh, uh, what do you call the e-commerce strategic roadmap, um, digital investments. We're working with Maida right now and all our other partners uh, such as Cyberview, Invest, uh, Slango. We had a chat with Invest Penang uh, earlier today. We had a chat with NCIA yesterday. Uh, so, you know, it's, a, it's always talking about how we can bring all of this together. And really, Islamic digital economy is something that we're going to pay a lot of attention to uh, this year and moving forward. We believe that's a, that's a great scope for us to develop uh, fintech solutions around for the Islamic digital economy. Uh, also, things like blockchain for your traceability, for halal traceability, uh, and also modest uh, wear, fashion wear. Yeah, uh, so that's something that we want to give uh, some uh, focus on. Uh, there's also grants and other fundraising, uh, alternative fundraising opportunities for all the investors coming in here, right? Uh, so if you qualify, obviously we, we want to help you. There's also incentives and grants provided by the state and uh, other federal agencies. We, we will look to harmonize that. Uh, dynamic startup ecosystem, where, you know, uh, connected to all the VCs, the accelerators, the debt ventures, uh, and, and the rest. So we're able to connect any investors to, to, their, to their needs. The ecosystem and support access according to talent, which is very, very important. I talked about that earlier on, like MMU. But only that, we've got 16 premier digital tech institutions. Uh, and those graduates are very much in demand because they are industry-ready graduates. And that's why they've been accredited to the PDTI by MDAC. Yeah? And the final one is a tech talent support for foreign workers yeah, that we have. And so we have the pen on uh, knowledge, foreign knowledge workers. Uh, it's easier if you're MSC companies. We process that, uh, that uh, what do you call that, applications. Uh, and also what I just explained earlier on with regards to the Malaysia Tech Entrepreneur Pass as well as the Digital Nomads uh, Pass. Next slide. So final slide. Uh, we really look forward to becoming your digital economy partner, uh, really working with the ecosystem. Uh, very happy to take any questions uh, right after this. And uh, if you look at the bottom left, this is our positioning, Malaysia, 
is really now the heart of digital ASEAN. Uh, and so to, to live up to that uh, aspiration, to live up to that objective, uh, we really want to, to provide you access to the business ecosystem, talent, startups and local tech champion, uh, digital economy stakeholders, including you know, market access, as well as access to the MSC Malaysia programs. Uh, on that note, thank you very much. Yemi, back to you. Thank you very much, Ray. And that was great. I really learned a lot myself too. And connecting with what you were just saying about the visas and support with the talent acquisition, we have a question from Maggie Ao. She's, she's wanting to know more. If she moves her headquarters to Malaysia, she has around 50 employees. How easy it is to move them to, to your country? And how do you get the visas? Right, so you know, on uh, right off the bat, thank you very much for that question, right? Uh, and I'm so happy to hear that we've got 50 people coming in. Uh, really, what what you need to do is to get in touch with MDAC, right? Get in touch with us. Uh, my team is here with me, uh, and they'll take these details. But uh, in terms of setting it up, if you if you can, I think the travel bubble is now being set up already, right? So we we see the travel bubble between Indonesia, Singapore, and the like. And uh, if there's an investment opportunity, uh, uh, MDEC to, working together with the immigration department can facilitate your entry first into, into Malaysia. But before even going there, uh, you know, please reach out to us. We welcome your investments into Malaysia, especially when Dato' Hassan is here and Jain Najib is here to Selengo, right? Uh, you saw the numbers presented by Dato' Hassan. They had a very good year last year. I'm sure they're hungry for more this year. Uh, Najib, you know, has presented his sectors on where he can support. So we're here to facilitate that, right? Um, and in terms of uh, investive, uh, sorry, inve incentive offerings, I think we can harmonize between the federal uh, incentives and also the state incentives, right? To see what works best uh, for you. Uh, MDAC also facilitates the expatriate passes into the ICT industry. So I don't think we need to worry about uh, that 50 people. In fact, the MSC tier one, tier two, and tier three, we encourage you to start with a minimum of two and go up to as many as you can. A lot of these companies, 2,900 companies, uh, have an average of about 100 over uh, workers, right? Uh, in their foreign workers as well. Uh, so it's really uh, quite simple to apply uh, online or really my team is here and then you know, send us your email. We'll be in touch ASAP right after this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ray, for that. And yes, they are already asking for your team's contact so, so they can go right away and connect. I would like to ask uh, Dato Hassan this similar question for uh, Maggie is asking, what are the incentives that the government has to help the workers move to your to your country and, and start their journey? Thank you, Jamie. Uh, 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 of course, uh, state government uh, and also federal government is working together in, in giving incentives or whatnot. But most of the uh, financial related incentives is given by the uh, federal government and uh, uh, state government uh, giving incentive in terms of the facilitation services as well as the uh, properly uh, coordinating and facilitating uh, the process of the project implementations. And we are also be able to assist you in uh, identifying suitable locations for the investor to set up uh, their business according to their requirements so that we can, uh, we can propose to you various uh, options uh, for you to choose and we will work hand in hand with SubWU, MDAC or even um, MIDA and, and so on. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan. I do have another question for you. We are, from, since from the title of this seminar, we want to know why is Selangor the golden state? As, as uh, I mentioned in my presentations just now, Selango is the highest contributor to the national GDP for the last uh, few decades. So there is the undisputable facts that can be disputed by other states. So that's why we claim our state as the golden state of Malaysia. Thank you, that, that's a great answer. Uh, there's so many questions that are coming in and I'm sure that if we don't have the time to ask them all today, they will connect to you separately offline. I would like to ask now, Mr. Najib, there's a few questions here from one of our attendees. They wanna know how can company, their company be part of CyberJaya of the test bed initiatives? Second, is there any so-called soft landing for CyberJaya? And how, if they're interested, 
to locate uh, their premises and their work in Cyberjaya, sh what should they do? Okay. I know there's a lot of questions uh, in there. All right, all right. Uh, please, by all means, uh, contact us. Uh, if you notice during my last slide, we have what we call the Cyberjaya Investment and Services Center. So all these queries, uh, you can uh, contact our, 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 our personnel there. They will be able to assist you. Okay, uh, with regards to these, uh, our programs, uh, access to program, uh, we have uh, two parts. In fact, now currently we have five startups working on, on uh, certain uh, aspects of the, the requirements eh, under our programs. Uh, in fact, I'll be meeting them, I think, next week. Um, so they're most completing now. So once that program completed, they will bring in more groups to, to, to come in and pitch their, uh, what do you call it, their, uh, their, 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 their projects. Uh, that's one. And uh, in terms of soft landing space, uh, in, cyber, in, 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 our, in our, our facility, we do have a uh, soft landing space, uh, you know, please come, you know, at our office and also at one of the facilities that adjacent to our office, the Rekascape. We also have some facility there as well for, for people to come in and to check us out. But by all means, contact us. They will bring you to look at these, these uh, programs and, and spaces. Thank you very much, Mr. Najib. Mm -hmm. One more question for Dato Hassan. Here is from Terry Chan. She wants to know that obviously there's the understanding that there's ethics restrictions in Malaysia. And if they want to invest there, how can they send their money in and out? As far as I'm concerned, uh, from the manufacturing activities in Malaysia, there is no restrictions for any companies to, uh, re uh, to do rep uh, money rep repatriations uh, to their own uh, countries. But even, even to bring in also, we don't have any, any, any restrictions on, on that. Thank you. Uh, anybody wants to comment on this? Anybody else? If not, there is one more question and I would like to open it for any of you who want to reply on this one. This comes from Jason. He is from DataSwift. They are the world leader in, in personal data access storage and portability infrastructure. They are a UK company, but they're mainly built by a Malaysian. One of the use cases of, uh, of their infrastructure is to decentralize federated ID. Is there anybody interested around uh, your contacts in Salangor or the companies that you work with in this type of service? Not at the moment. Do we want, uh, is it Raymond, perhaps they want, they should contact you. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're very happy to, to facilitate uh, interest like this. Uh, you know, uh, whether there's a market, of course, there's a market, right? Uh, just within the MSC, you know, we shared early on 2,900 MSC companies. Uh, and there are many, many more, right? Uh, SMEs across Malaysia, uh, the last count, you know, a million uh, above. Uh, and, you know, we're also looking at government agencies and, and the government sectors as well. So in terms of market access within Malaysia, yes, please come to us. Uh, but also, interestingly, let's not forget the land and expand, right? Come in here, we'll facilitate you, we'll, we'll see what we can do together, contact us, and also then let's see how we can connect you uh, to the region, right, based out of Malaysia, right, so you can grow your, your base from here. I hope, I hope that is uh, an answer. Thank you, thank you very much, Raymond. Everybody here, thank you very much for attending today and obviously to our speakers for their insights, our event organizer, Gary Lamb from Asia CEO Community. As I said, if there's any other questions, you can connect to us with our speakers and obviously the rest of the members of Asia CEO Community. I'm Jamilet once again. I'm very, very happy to have been your moderator for today. I'll wrap up, let you enjoy your Friday afternoon, and hopefully we'll see you once again in the next sessions because I'm sure there's gonna be plenty. Thank you again to Selangor Invest and to you all. Have a good day. Good day, have a good weekend. Stay safe. Stay safe, bye-bye. Bye-bye.